Hello friends, welcome back to my channel if you're returning and if this is your first time watching one of my videos, welcome. My name is Rachel and I am a reseller on sites like eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari. So I purchase clothing, shoes, accessories, and I sell them online for a profit. Today I'm here to share with you my top sales of December week one and two of 2023. So if you wanna see what sold for the highest amounts of money in the last two weeks for me, definitely stick around. So it's been a little bit crazy over here, as I imagine it has been for everybody. Um, I have been doing a lot of work, just closing out the year, getting ready for 2024. And uh, I actually was out of town for about a week out of the the first week of December. So um, usually when I do a two week video, I do 25. Today I'm only doing the top 15. Everything was shut down for like four or five days, so it doesn't really make sense to do um, a bigger countdown. So hang with me. I still made some really great sales. If you like reseller content, definitely consider subscribing to my channel. I love sharing my top sales with you, but I also do a lot of unboxing videos on this channel. I talk about what I'm selling and show you what I'm getting into my business. Um, also for 2024, I really am going to try to get into more like tips and tricks videos. Um, Earlier this month, I was kind of folding those tips and tricks into these top sales videos, but I've decided I want to really like make some uh, dedicated strategy type videos. So coming for 2024, stay tuned for that as well. So this past two weeks, aside from being out of town, um, my biggest focus has not been really inventory, bringing inventory in. It's been moving inventory out. So it's been kind of busy sales wise, which is good. It's, you know, Q4, it's the end of Q4. The holidays are like right here. So it's, it, you know, typically my b busier time of the year. That's not unusual. But also what I'm doing right now is um, I'm removing inventory that is just not selling. First year, really, my husband's really had his hands involved in the financial side of my business. And this year, we're actually trying the accrual method for accounting, uh, you know, for our costs of inventory. So there's two different ways, if you're not familiar, there's two different ways to account for inventory. If you use the accrual method, you account for the cost of the item when it sells. If you use the cash method, you account for the cost of the item when you purchase it which neither way is necessarily right or wrong, but we've been doing when it sells. So um, typically in the past, I've done like a purge of stale inventory around like January or February, once you really get into that winter lull, um, just because it's, you know, it's something to do and, and something that needs to be done and better done while it's slow, right? Um, but doing this accrual method, it's going to be more beneficial for me to remove stale inventory and account for the cost of that inventory before the year starts over. So I've been working through that. Um, I haven't listed anything new in probably two weeks, close to two weeks, which um, is a long time for me. Normally I'm, you know, photographing and listing like constantly. So I've been taking a break from that. I've letting what I have sell. I'm removing things that haven't been selling. And probably next week, I am going to get back into starting some listings. I'm really working through some active wear right now because that really does seem to sell really well, you know, at the end of December, beginning of January. So I want to kind of prioritize that right now. And also any other like winter, fall and winter inventory, um, because pretty soon here, it's already going to start being time to list spring and summer stuff already. I know it's crazy. Um, so I kind of just want to show you what's going on in my office. I want you to see the hot mess that I'm dealing with right now. So take a look. So here is my current situation. I have been purging items uh, that I just simply don't think I'm going to sell. So a lot of, well, everything in these three bags are going back to Goodwill. Um, then this bag here is all kids clothing. I ordered that doppel box from Helpsy and it's a lot of stuff. So I picked out a lot of stuff I'm going to sell myself, but then also a lot of stuff I'm going to try to get to buy, sell, trade first. This stuff is all pulled and it's going to go to Uptown Cheapskate. Um, it's, I don't have high hopes, but I'm going to try. And if it doesn't go to Uptown Cheapskate or if they don't take it, then I will send it to ThreadUp 
or I will send it to Goodwill, depending on if it's brands that ThreadUp accepts. These two boxes are packed up and ready to go to uh, ThreadUp. I will schedule a package pickup this week. Those are ready to go to the post office. Yay, sales. And uh, these two here are actual boxes that I'll be unboxing this week. Um, then over here, I've got some stuff that I need to list. What's up on that shelf there and what's down here in this pile. This is to be listed. I haven't done any new listings in almost two weeks. So I'm pretty excited to get back to listing. Yeah, so needless to say, it's been a little crazy around here, um, but today I am recording a bunch of videos. I've got the two unboxings that you'll see in the next couple of weeks. I've got the um, J. Crew Madewell denim box from Boutique by the Box, and I ordered the Faithful the Brand box from Helpsy Source. So those are upcoming. Um, and then the rest is just going to be 90 day updates. I am pretty caught up. I, I For a minute there, I was really uh, behind on my 90 day updates and they were more like 120 day updates. Um, but after, you know, I, I give you guys the next two weeks worth of all 90 day updates, I should be pretty current. So I'm glad for that. Anyway, hit that like button if you find any of this helpful. That really does help out my channel a lot. And I'm just going to get right into the countdown now. So what I'll do is I'll show you on the side here what the item is. I'll talk about where it came from, how much I paid for it, and how much it sold for. So hopefully this helps you if you're sourcing for your own reseller business, whether it's buying boxes that I've purchased or you know finding these brands out thrifting in the wild. Just I'm letting you know what's working for me so that hopefully it helps you kind of decide what you might want to uh, dive into next. All right, so this is the top 15 from December 1st through December 15th of 2023. First one here is this Sherpa lined flannel shirt. This was actually a men's shirt from J. Crew Factory. This was from my Boutique by the Box J. Crew and Madewell sweaters box. I don't really know if that box was supposed to be like women's versus men's. I don't remember. I really don't remember. Um, but anyway, it was, it was in there and... Um, my cost per piece on that box was $16.20 and it sold for $43 on eBay. And actually it was only, it sold the same day I, that it was listed. So, um, you know, people, I will say people kind of knock the J Crew factory, which some pieces like t-shirts and stuff. Yeah. They're, they're not worth a whole lot, but some of these like jackets, coats, sweaters, they still sell pretty well. So don't knock the J Crew factory, especially like the certain pieces that maybe were retailed a lot higher. Just, just saying. Um, then I had, this is the Renew Tote from Everlane. So I ordered um, the Everlane bags box, which I had been trying to get my hands on forever. And it finally went available. It was super expensive. I'm not going to lie. It was really pricey, but I bought it anyway because I was looking at the Everlane website and how much their bags sell for. And I was like, hey, you know, if I, if I can pay up for these, but I get some of these like really expensive leather bags, that might not be a bad thing. So long story short, it took like six weeks to get here. They had a, a stock issue, an inventory issue. It got here. I didn't unbox it for YouTube because um, I was in a hurry to just get stuff listed and I wasn't filming that day and I'd waited so long for that box anyway. And when I opened it, it had 11 bags and nine hats, like baseball hats. And my cost per piece was like $29. <laughs> so I emailed them and um, they ended up refunding me for um, the nine hats. They just gave me like 29 times nine back. And uh, they didn't ask me for the hats back. They didn't have any more bags. So anyway, my cost after that, I, which I ended up being able to list the hats, which is cool. So my cost... Um, ended up being $15 per piece once that was all figured out. They're great with making it right if something happens. Um, but, you know, it was it was a little bit of a, a lengthy process for me. But anyway, um, this one sold for $45 on eBay, uh, plus the buyer paid the shipping. And this one was listed two weeks. And actually speaking, um, pretty much all of the bags that were in that box sold within like two weeks. So it was... It was a high cost per piece. It wasn't all bags. I wish it would have been all bags, but everything, I think I only have three left out of the 11 and they won't, they haven't even been listed a month. So not complaining. Um, then I had 
and actually I've sold a unusual, maybe not unusual. I've sold my fair share of swimsuits this past couple weeks. I think this is the only one though that made the countdown. This is the Andy Swim Lagos blue swimsuit. This is a size extra small. I got this so I've ordered Andy Swim from both Boutique by the Box and Helpsy. This particular one was in the box that I ordered from Boutique by the Box. Um, $9.94 was my cost per piece. Um, this one I purchased back in July. And so uh, technically it's been sitting a while, but also it's swimwear. So, you know, it, it it's, it's not in season, but it did sell eventually for $49 on Poshmark. Here's another Everlane bag. This is the Transit Weekender. So this was this huge like duffel bag, uh, almost like an airplane carry-on bag. And this one sold within two weeks. It was a $51 Poshmark sale. So 15 into 51. Then I had this black cotton oversized cardigan. This was one from my Everlane sweaters box. Um, I ordered a second Everlane sweaters box after I did the 90 day update on my, my, on my first one. And it definitely was not as good as the first one, but the first one was like over the top, like amazing. Um, and this one was, it was decent, but it definitely wasn't over a top amazing like the first one was. Um, but anyway, this sweater was a $55.24 eBay sale. Um, this one sold within two weeks. I ran a pretty hefty sale on eBay for Black Friday. I did 30% off everything, literally everything, even my newly listed items. And so I ended up selling some things for like way less than I had even if I was taking offers, what I would normally have wanted for it. But I moved a ton of inventory. I scheduled the sale for one week. It started like the Tuesday before Thanksgiving until the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. And the sale did so well that I ran that 30% off for another week because it, it just did so well. Like I did not expect. So I did let some things go. Um, for a little bit less than what I probably would have wanted for it. But going back to what I said about how we're counting this year, it's okay. I'm not mad about it. I didn't let anything go for less than what I paid for it unless it was something that was going to get donated or sent to thread up anyway. Um, so this one I paid $18 for. I'm pretty sure I had it listed a lot higher than that based on what it was listed for on the Everlane website because it was still a pretty current piece, but I still got $54 and, or $55.24 for it. So I am happy about that. It was only listed two weeks. Um, then also I had these Good American Bombshell Leggings. These are a size 5, which I think is a Good American size 2X, extra large 2X. I think it's a 2X. But anyway, um, I actually have a 90-day update coming up on this box. This was from my Good American apparel box from Boutique by the Box. And I listed this stuff back in July. And this one was a $59.99 eBay sale. Actually, I don't think that one was part of a sale. I think that one sold in that little bit of time. Between the time the first sale ended and the second sale started, $59.99 I think was my full asking price, which is a little bit um, interesting because I know I have those same leggings listed on Poshmark and by then I had dropped the price, closet clear out, sent offers to a lot less than that. But hey, it, you know, it just depends on where somebody finds it. So I paid $20 per item from that box, $59.99 eBay sale. Um, I am glad to see those go. I really just thought those were going to end up being reported as unsold, but hey, I'll take it. Um, then I had the Bonjura um, gray heather vest. This was from my way back when Prana box from Boutique by the Box that I ordered back uh, back in January of this year. And, you know, I was hoping the vests would sell. I, I didn't get them listed until like mid-January. So that's a very small window of time to sell vests. Plus, when I listed them, because I had just got them in, I listed them way higher. Um, I sold it for 60. I think I initially listed these for 120 or 130. So the fact that it was kind of ending the winter season back in January and then how high I had it priced. Somebody sent me an offer for $60 on eBay and I did just go ahead and take it. Um, 
you know, these have already been sitting over a year. And the last thing I want to do is keep them priced too high. I only paid $8 a piece for these. So eight into 60, that was a great sale. It just took a little while, I think, because I had them a little high priced um, to begin with. So there's that. Um, then from my Boutique by the Box, Madewell and J. Crew dresses and denim box, this was a pair of hard, Harlow wide leg jeans. Um, they were white, and I've actually sold a surprising amount of white denim this month, despite the fact that it's December. So hey, um, these were $15.30 per piece, and they were a $60 Poshmark sale. I had the felted merino hoodie. Um, this one was from my Everlane sweaters box, the second one, which the first one I bought was all women's sweaters, and then the second one was women's and men's combined. So this one was a men's sweater, and um, I had this one. The buyer was asking me a ton of questions on eBay, and you can let me know in the comments your experience with this, but for me... I'm going to be honest, when I get a ton of questions on eBay, it makes me not want to sell to that person <laughs> because in my experience, and not everybody, but a lot of buyers, once they ask a lot of questions and they decide to buy the item, it becomes a problem later. They're unhappy with it. It's They, they want to complain about who knows what, and then they want to return it, or they want to leave negative feedback, or they... they back you into a corner and say, if you don't give me my money back, I will leave you negative feedback. And then you have no choice but to take the loss. So in my experience, as soon as I start getting a ton of questions on eBay, it's like red flags, like don't sell to this person. And I hate to be like that. And a lot of times I kind of ignore my instincts on that. And I say, you know what, I, I shouldn't make assumptions about people. Um, but those bells still go off. So anyway, I got all those questions on eBay and then I got an offer on Mercari and I realized, uh, and actually the person on eBay actually messaged me and said, oh, I made you an offer on Mercari. And so I took it right from eBay to Mercari. Number one, eBay takes more fees, Mercari takes less. And if the buyer really is unhappy with it after all of that, like in my opinion, it's, there's a good chance it, he will be. Um, this just sold on December 13th, so it's too soon to tell at this point. But uh, at least since it sold on Mercari, there's a lot more protection for me as the seller. And there's a lot less uh, repercussions if the customer doesn't like the item or whatever. If he wants to give me a bad rating, um, it doesn't really affect me the way it would affect me on eBay. So when I saw that, I was like, bring it over to Mercari. And quite frankly, I love eBay. eBay is probably my top platform. But if this ever happens, I would rather sell the item anywhere other than on eBay, if I'm being honest. Whew. Anyway, uh, I love when these when these sales turn into story times. But uh, next up is the Harlow Wide Leg Pants in True Black. These were in my Boutique by the Box J. Crew and Madewell Tops and Bottoms box. Um, these were listed only three weeks and they sold on Poshmark for $65. If you see this style, I have found the Harlow. Um, I don't know if they just do wide leg or if it's like the Harlow is the cut. Anything that has been Harlow has sold very fast for me. I've gotten Harlow style pants and jeans in a few of my Boutique by the Box Madewell J. Crew varieties, and they're always the first to go. So if you see those, definitely price them uh, accordingly. And uh, I actually think I listed these at 90 and somebody offered me 65, which I think is still very decent. Um, my cost per piece on that box was $7.60. So uh so yeah, that was a really, really good sale. Then I had um, the Italian Merino Rib Turtleneck, also from my Everlane Sweaters box. This box is a common theme uh, on today's countdown. Um, so $18 per piece on this one and $69.99 sale on eBay, only listed two weeks. Also from that same box, there was the Half Zip Ribbed Sweater. This one was a size extra small. This one was actually new without tag. Um, and this one sold also on eBay for $74.99, um, only listed five days. So that was a great sale. There was the Perfect Vintage Jean uh, from Madewell. Now, these actually were surprising because they were a size 24 petite. 
and they were sold out on the Madewell website in this size, um, but the, the actual style was still available in many sizes, not just this size. So these sold after only 10 days, uh, $18 was my cost per piece, and they sold on eBay for $79.99. So that was a fantastic return on my investment. Um, and generally speaking, I've been very, very happy with these Madewell J. Crew boxes from Boutique by the Box. They've been doing amazing, so very happy. This one's also from my Everlane Bags box. This was the New Day Market Tote. And let me tell you, this bag was like kind of mangled. It was like smushed into the box. And I don't know if it got mangled on its way to Helpsy or it got mangled on its way to me. I don't know. But either way, it was one of those more structured like I don't know if it was leather or what, but it was it was creased. It was not like completely solid, smooth like it would be when you first buy it. Um, but it did have the tag on it. And um, this bag was listed on the site for over $200. And I'm like, well, I can't sell it as much as I would if it were like in better condition. But I listed, I disclosed the flaws. Again, my cost per piece, $15. And this one sold for $100 on Poshmark. And it was only listed two days, so not complaining. I really didn't think that I was even going to get 100. I, I put 100 and then, actually, I think I listed it for 120. And then I decided I would just take offers and basically anything above 50, I probably would have accepted. But uh, I did go ahead and um, just somebody offered me 100. So I was like, um, yes, of course, I'm going to take it. And then also, this is sort of a tie for first, um, because this also sold for $100. This was from my Everlane Sweaters box, number two. The felted merino half-zip sweater. This was a size extra large, and it sold on eBay for $100. It was only listed 12 days. So that box is doing very well for me. Um, even with the higher cost of goods, I'm probably going to look for that box again. Um, but that is all... 15 of my highest sales for December week one and two. Um, it's been a wild ride this December. Sometimes December kind of lags for me, but it's actually been going pretty well. So let me know in the comments what your best sales have been, or just in general, how have your sales been? December can be hit or miss. You know, you're, you've got more people shopping, but you've got also other retail stores with deeply discounted stuff and everybody's competing for the same piece of the pie, if you will. So um, let me know how you've been doing. I'm definitely interested to know. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see my upcoming 90-day updates and my couple of unboxings. And thank you so much for supporting my channel in 2023. I absolutely look forward to seeing you in 2024. My first video of the year will be the top um, 15 of week two and three of December 2023. So hit that like button if you don't mind on the way out. And thank you so much for watching. Happy holidays, friends, and I will catch you next time.